Okay, so um, I'd like to introduce to you a little bit to Klang and to a little part of Klang called Oculi, which is a library to access abstract syntax trees from C++ and other languages. And um, basically, the tooling is thought to be a tool set for writing tools for C++. Um, you can um, basically write a printer which calculates the S, or you can write some tool that generates statistics out of it. But you also can make a, um, a refactoring tool which replaces certain parts of your code. And um, I have a few examples for that. Um, I was motivated to, to look into Klein by the talk which uh, Santa Kerf did do in Aspen this year, and um, it also got uh, filmed and it's on YouTube. And if you want to get a further introduction into Klein, I think his talk is very good. We have a general overview. And as we only have uh, 45 minutes, I'm trying to give you a little bit of a general overview, but also to show you some code, and maybe we have also the possibility to get the programming. Um, so, I think first we need to start to, to, to see um, what Clang is, and Clang is basically the C language part of the low-level virtual machine, which um, includes C, C++, and Objective-C, and um, as far as I know, the C++ part also includes C++11. Um, as far as supported by client. But, um, so you can already parse C++11 corpus client and has um, They made the wise decision to implement LLVM in C and C++, mainly in C++. So we have a tool to work uh, with C++ code in C++. And um, There is a very good page. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, you might want to get started with Clang, and just basically, I couldn't write it better than they do on the website. Um, you have, as you see here, you have to check out various um, repositories. Um, you have the dependency first to LLVM, then you have to check out Clang in some subdirectory, um, then there's some optional things, and then you can build Clang, and and if you just want to use the tooling, I think it's, yeah, you, you still need basically to have everything because um, the tooling is built on top of the compiler. So you need the compiler parts too because um, that's basically what you're going to instantiate often in your tools is having a um, um, compiler environment running on C++ and allowing you to access this uh, environment and to transfer information back and forth and rewrite stuff and dump it again in the file. And we go back to the presentation. We see with the, with the lip tooling from Clang, um, it's defined as a library to support writing standalone tools based on Clang. So your only dependency actually is Clang and C++. Because, as far as I've seen, Clang is, is a huge framework of hundreds and dozens of classes and interfaces and methods. And it has actually no um, other in, um, dependencies, for example, to boost or something. So they basically, all the, the, the use they make of uh, C++ is either it's SDL or it's something they have written themselves. And um, the code itself is pretty nice, it's read in namespaces, and um, the only thing which I don't actually like about it is they write a uh, very good thing. So you, you, sometimes when you, when you read code and it's not properly um, highlighted, you, you can get confused that this now is now a, now a very good type because type there is also a thing. But you'll see that later. Um, yeah, so, I could almost and 
I'd like to go to Coke now to have in general some um, stuff we can see in Coke. And for I think that the project is to create it. It's here, let's just test code to see if I can fix the setup. up. And here we now get into the actual code with this, this file will run as it says. So we'll compile it and it says as a parameter which gets the zone. So we later, when we run this to it, this tool will parse this code that you currently see. And um, we have a class called recursive ask visitor, which um, is a template which then is uh, our base class for our um, visitor, which we now try to, to, to visit the ask and try to get information out of the ask. And um, we later see maybe in some examples that we also can um, put information back into the ask kind of thing can uh, change things and print them out again to, to a file and do in that way um, refactoring tools. Mm. The visitor is implemented with virtual functions. You have all kinds of virtual functions which you can overload and then once this node occurs in the S3 it will be caught. Um, Basically, that's what we do here. Um, you see that um, again. You know, we need we're interested in the in the, in the full location and location variables in the source because this program I wrote to to print out kind of like a tree um, of of things it finds and it looks as far as I remember. It looks for class names, function names, and variables and. We have a context which is um, handed over to the constructor, as you see, which is the context of the ask we are currently in. And we get the declaration as an argument. And then we ask the context for the location. And um, the declaration we ask for the location start. And Now we get a bit, bit deeper in the in the API, and um, for example, for location, you see this, this is actually copied from an example from client. Um, a certain date, like a type, not a code. So for me, it's a bit confusing reading the code sometimes. But um, I think you could write a tool with client and rename all variables in the code. But it's possible. But I haven't had the time to do it. Um, now we just tested that what we, <coughs> what we got from plan now is valid, and um, also we want to know this new system header because um, as we're running in a, in a compiler environment, we get pulled in a lot of stuff from the system, and as we only want to to get the information from the local file, we test on this. Um, there's an easy method to do it, and I hope that hopefully that, that someday in the RP is a better method to, to do that. Or maybe also there should be ways to restrict uh, the parcel from, from client to maybe to a local file or to a certain set of files. Um, then we notice, again, we don't uh, use C out here, we use parallel volume out which is basically the streaming component component to the um, console for plan. And yeah, we found this class declaration. Um, from the full location, we get all the spelling and number. And um, the column number, so we know where basically this um, thing which we found resides. And we um, get this name as a string and print it out as a console. So we can see that we found the class name. So now we basically do a similar thing to a declaration. A declaration is basically a declaration of what you get in the code. And we then use um, several if 
to determine if this is um, in a, um, a certain thing that you are interested in, a method, a function declaration, and in last year, the last field we put declaration, which would be variable. And again, we test the uh, valid and the uh, system header, and we print off the first one in message field. And then there's another name declaration, um, which we test out <coughs> the name declaration, but if we know correctly, it's a base class from the declarations we see above. And if we get that, um, we test on the name declaration and some other functions again. Um, <coughs> we want to know if it's an instance member, and uh, if it's a fun function type, etc. It's just a little bit test for uh, coding, the code for test is kind of there. And yeah, if everything, <coughs> if we actually have a field declaration, then we print out again the value, and otherwise, the um, we just print out the, the font um, declaration here. And this is actually already the, the F visitor class. We see it now at the end of the private context, which um, provides us with the, the callbacks for the visitor and, and the context in that, which is currently there. Um, then we implement the find named class consumer um, from client as consumer and implement um, same again. We have here the visitor as the base class on no, it's not the base class. It's um, it's uh, a variable in private again, and this is basically just a border page code what we see here. Um, we get a handle translation unit uh, call from client for the for the S context on some time, and um, there's a visitor mm -hmm. that is called reverse uh, declaration, and at the end we end up visiting all the nodes that we wanted to visit. Um, then we have again a bit more boilerplate code, which is a fundamental class action um, derived from S frontend action. And we just implement here a create function, so basically this is a kind of a factory implementation for planning to create our version of find name class consumer. And then we have the main function which um, basically, reads in the C++ file, which is got handed, and um, calls a machine called client tooling and wants the tool which we implemented to find names class action on the file which we have um, read in. Screen and I guess it could be done a bit more beautiful, but it's just a code testing. And let's see if I can get this one. Okay, now we see, uh, we first we get a call error because client does not be, uh, be happy because um, actually the, the part we missed, we didn't implement any incentivization for client here. So client can't handle the header, the first header it finds, it kicks it out. <coughs> so I, I don't know that, and I can open it and we're done. But still, um, the S uh, runs before that, and we get all the, the information actually we wanted. And, um, of course, in a, in a real tool, you probably don't want to have this uh, error message, so you should have a fully um, implemented uh, value of uh, plan there, which we will later see in, in another example. And now we see that um, all the method names and um, variable names and functions are printed, and it's even, um, yeah, it's a bit of a tree like. I, Actually, originally I I had the plan to try to get this into a, into Qt and then into Qt tree, tree view. That's also the reason I'm using Qt Creator. Um, but on the one on one hand, I'm not a really expert in Clang, and I did not have the time to really get <coughs> to implement this um, due to the conference coming closer. So. Um, one thing also, um, it's not that easy to get 
line and the tooling running with your creator. Um, you technically you build client with um, This is basically the way clients build it. Everywhere Steam make. And um, it's actually very easy to build client with it. And um, I chosen the, the compiler, uh, which is um, minimum um, GNU for Windows, which is also the compiler where the boost, um, not the boost SDK, but the, the Qt SDK is compiled. And, um, to get this running in Qt Creator, you have to set up certain things that it finds the header in the correct um, in the correct way, and, and you have to define a few macros and defines, and there's kind of a lot of dependencies you have in Clang, as you see here. There's many, many letters that you have to link, and those letters get some other libraries which we need to use for the, actually the program to run on the Windows. But this is also the basic libraries under planning which you need. And now there's another example which I set up in here. Um, now this is the real example from, from client. Um, there's extra, as you see, there's a folder tools extra. And there are a few implementations of examples of tools. Um, one of them is a basic tool template where you can see how you can get started. Um, I think originally as I started that there was a CPP file there, I think that was generated over CMake probably. Um, And if we get an image here, we have now here an example for um, a file, a simple example which runs over a file, looks up for um, SDR class, CSDR calls of SAD string, and removes them if they're not necessary. takes a little bit of time to, to get around and to see how things are done. Um, as I think the best source for, for getting help with client and for learning about client is the mailing list. That's, at least that's my uh, opinion. And the, the mailing list of client is very active. Um, but as far as I know, there's yet no special mailing list for the tooling. So we have all sorts of questions on the client mailing list. <coughs> We open up all kinds of namespaces, so um, this is an example, and we have the full implementation of train later on the main function. I think it's probably best to first look at the main function, but it's really that um, how everything is instantiated. Um, yeah, okay. <coughs> um, first, client wants to start with a Compilation database is basically will contain all the files and types and everything which we have get from the compilers, etc. Et um, then we have a helper which um, has the command line options. Um, this is important. If you if you drop a client, you will need the tools you need to, to hand over, or it's expected from client that you hand over the um, the command line that you can put all kind of specs in which you like to have to work with client. And so basically, you're you're essentially adding here a full 
flexible version of Clang in code, and you can basically you have now a compiler. Um, now we see if the compilation was successful, and um, if it was not, we get the error message, we reset the compiler database, and try to um, build in that location from a directory which we have um, overhanded also somewhere else. Um, and if this fails, then it's a fucking error, and we get the error message from the um, LLVM. Otherwise, we go to plan tooling and uh, implement the refactoring tool, which then gets um, certain S matches handed to it. You <coughs> see, and um, this is basically now the local implementation of what we'd like to do. And um, we instantiate this and as, as a codec and add as a match as a matcher and there are a bunch of predefined matches and in this case um, we um, wrap it wrap, wrap it in something called a construct expression and we say has declaration with a method declaration has name and in this case, a uh, string constructor, because in that case, I think they want to, to find out if there's uh, a string constructor in a certain way in the code. Um, yeah, some argument counts, which then afterwards has, has another call to has argument. Um, you specify an ID and say a member call expression. Um, ID is member, member expression is instantiated, method declaration is a has name, and um, this is basically the name which is defined above, uh, above main um, for the type, for ex the exact name which the compiler basically will see for string CSDR. And more arguments and all the product which we have created up there and then we basically do this for a second occurrence of a uh, string um, and after <coughs> that, this, this, this constructing the whole thing uh, we are just let the tool run on um, 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 as we see we, we create again a, a front end and <coughs> Coach up here, um, yeah, we, we do um, some. We see good parts of the scene and we see source parts where we now actually, if you use source parts, we go here in the description, we now specify the sources from source zero to them. And if we work with a build pass, we specify the build pass here. <coughs> <coughs> Here now we see the, the string definition of what the compiler should name the function <coughs> correctly, what we're interesting in, interested in. And for one thing, there's uh, the basic string constructor, CSD. And the other thing is um, CSDR, which we are inter interested to replace. And <coughs> now we have here the implementation of our mesh finder, or more or less our mesh product. And we have a method called run, where we specify now what actually should be done and when the last match or matches are called and we figure out that the core expression, we get some information here. Um, <coughs> we figure out if it's an error or not, which is basically now um, trying to find if um, the member, um, yeah, as it's described here, if the call was using basically a pointer or not a pointer, or what's, what's a calling operator, that's basically is here, the question. And um, then we 
try to get the argument text together and it's either error, we test if it's error and then we um, format the dereference in here and if it's not error, then we just format it with get text. Um, if it's empty, that's not of interest for us, so we return. And if it's empty, we call replace, um, which we see is another class from from two <coughs> um, Call to replacement, and um, again we have uh, the call to insert here, and we actually insert the uh, replacement. In, I think re replacement is a vector of replacement, as far as I remember. Um, we put in what we what we're looking for what we're looking for and basically this replacement class will do now the refactoring for us. And then we have here a method called for March reference, which um has <coughs> again a source code manager. So um, Sometimes in the class, and in the class, we have certain class event manager which manage certain, certain information. Um, in this case, it's basically the, the information which comes from the source. And we have the expression which we are looking at currently. And then we look at, we have a unary operator. And if we do have a unary operator, we um, get the opcode from the operator and um, ask if it's ever off. And in that case, we call the text, which is rather the front of the head of about it, which we'll see in a minute. And um, so here, we have some, some other um, call arguments handed to it. And um, then we actually have another method getting the text from the text. And um, if the text is empty, we will return an empty string, and um, if it's not, so the other we need, um, as we see, it's particular in the comments, it's um, returning either a leading star as here, as we see, or just a leading star. But basically, it's um, I am here. We have some method <coughs> which gives us information if this node needs a uh, permanent base after the unary, unary operator. So we may be part of a bigger um, um, set of, of expressions and <coughs> to, 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 to um, refactor the code in a dead way that doesn't come anymore. So we have to, to, to wrap our expression now in a in parentheses and as a starting point. So now we have this method called needs a uh, for unary, unary operator and <coughs> we see that um, now we from the operator we get again the operator we see it's a plus and minus call or subscript. No, no, it's not a plus, it's a plus plus or a minus minus. And before that we test if the uh, Arguments we have for this operation and the S is to because it only addresses it. So. And here's the documentation, and it's, as you see, it says that return true of expression needs to be put in terms um, when it is an argument of the operator, e.g., when it's this. When it is a binary <coughs> or standard operator syntactically. And this is the get text method which basically extracts the text out of the file. And on this get text, we format our own text then and put it back in, into the um, source code data. So we've seen. And Basically, um, this is the whole implementation of the example. And as you've seen, it, it's 
quite complicated in some ways as um, playing a little bit of, the, of its own world and um, I think you, you, you have seen what you can do with Clang and um, basically this Clang, with Whistlet tooling you have the tool set to read in any C++ file to get any information which the compiler can read out of it um, you can make a statistics tool which just counts entirely how many classes functions or whatever operator are in the file or you can change things tools I've seen out there are so many things. There's one tool which parses C++ and computes and transfers Qt4 code to Qt5. <coughs> I've seen a tool looking for shared pointers and especially for occurrences when we have a function and a shared pointer is handed over by value and not by reference. And so basically with every function call we generate a copy of shared pointer which is an through and this tool basically transforms the, the, the function call of being by value it's adding a reference <coughs> so there's already a lot of tools out there um, some, some example which I've also um, seen here but it's, it's far too complex to present in 45 minutes it's a, a loop converter which um, tries to convert normal for loops as we have them in C++ <coughs> to the new for loops which we have now in C++ 11 and there's still a whole bunch of other things out there but I think we don't have the time for actually um, getting closer into, into the things so what we've seen, we have um, an abstract uh, syntax tree visitor which can search the S and we can get certain nodes that are interested, interesting for us and on the other hand we can refactor and change those nodes and um, print them out again and basically this is now from my part um, the end and do you have any questions about Clang? Oh. Yes. <coughs> yes. Uh, the uh, lead tool stuff doesn't go by on the latest Clang stable version stable for it using a later uh, uh, thing uh, reason. Um, do you know the reason of that, or did it be decentralized for this video to version? We expect to be somewhere. I hope so. I'm not so familiar with uh, actually ongoing development with Clang. Um, the 3.1 version I checked out compiled for me in the Clang. So maybe this is an issue with, with your checkout. So maybe you want to check out from S4 and again. Okay, at, at least it was a situation a month ago. But we will check them. The last time I checked, which is long ago, Clang uh, didn't uh, work on Microsoft Windows. Is that changed? That's mm -hmm. Is that changed? So Clang is now fully supported for Windows? Clang itself. Is Clang itself supported on the Windows platform? On the Windows platform? Windows, yeah. Last time I checked, um, there were three different. No, no, no there's, 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 there's a difference that we have to see. Um, Clang as a tool compiled under Windows. The code is perfectly written on C++, there is no dependencies to, to, to Apple or to Linux, the compiler works, but you cannot generate executables on Windows. Okay, so, so this, is, this is still a part where people would like to see some work, but there is currently no one really being able to do that work as in Microsoft probably will not uh, 
yet and over the compilation plan. And therefore, there's some people wanting to do it and some people would like to do it. <coughs> and as far as I know, there's currently no serious work for having a <coughs> working plain compiler for generating code for Windows 8 or 7 or yes. It currently doesn't exist, but it's still the same. Okay. And you can't uh, um, uh, compile a client with. Uh, you can't compile a client with Visual Studio too. Yes, you can. You can. It's actually, I think it's a default on the Windows. So it's actually compiled on the Windows, and so it's a it's a running, it, it compiles on the uh, Microsoft Visual Studio too. Okay. So, um, looking at how the uh, introspection you can get by using uh, tools from can exist, uh, how far are we to have a compile time debugger? <laughs> so I can compile a piece of code and just step through whatever the compiler is doing. So I can check, for example, my, the proper template specification is selected or uh, stuff like that. Because that's currently something which is really missing in C++. It's that uh, you compile some stuff and it fails for a few reasons and you have no way uh, to trust back what happened. Uh, because either the, the error message is cryptic or buried into too much details or the message doesn't make any sense. Uh, could be cool if we could have some kind of tool like this. I hope you do a little explain that thing. And I'm not, I'm not sure if work in that area is already being done. I mean, you could have reminded us this claim. Not sure how much uh, work you need to do for that. And um, I think it's possible, and I think a lot of people would like to have that. And I think it's, it's surely going to be either being implemented already or being implemented within the next year. Basically, um, for me, the, the motivation was to have a planned talk at the conference, and unfortunately, I could not get in contact with any of the um, developers, and so I decided either to talk about myself, about time, than to have actually somebody who's probably a bit more uh, professional at time than I. Does anyone have for them that we are working on a, a, a kind of template of the program, debug a profile, uh, modify the claim, uh, and, and generate uh, um, kind of uh, warnings and instrumentation information and timestamps on the instantiations? It's not necessary at work but uh, I, I know that they. Uh, a few months we will be in a stable version. That's not enough. And the name of it is? <laughs> What's the name of the tool? Um, well, actually, it has a, a, a really a prototype version, a name of template, and there were papers on that. Uh, in GT cooperatives, mm -hmm. but that was a, a, a version uh, of it working with instrumentation, uh, which was not really perfect. Any more questions? Maybe I have one question. It refers to the compile and debugger. Um, is it then you can uh, compile or get information from a program which compiles? But if it doesn't compile, such as a template error, etc., you have to get the right information about where it fails, why it fails, etc., etc. Is that information available? Um, if you look at it, so there should be some yes, yes. For actually, this actually, actually, this is exactly the use case for Clang currently. Um, Clang 
on the platform where it generates code. It generates code, but the code is usually not as efficient as the code of other compilers. And I know a lot of people who have a working tool set of Clang running, for example, that for exactly that reason, Clang has a very good error message and it's usually much more exact on the error than, especially the template code, than um, other compilers. So I know several environments and companies where Clang is used as a compiling tool to find uh, template errors and other errors which are um, hidden in, inside of uh, the compilation <coughs> and are not as good to, to be trackable with other compilers and tool sets. Okay, that's good. So that, that's probably also available in lib tools, the same information, the same error information. Because you need that if you want to make um, something yourself an error. It's available on client. The tooling itself uh, does not error checking. The tooling itself is only the, the, the part for doing refactoring and getting visiting the S nodes and stuff. But there's other parts of code and um, from client, of course, the mm -hmm. is done and you can access that too. It's all open source and um, it's uh, released on a very good open source license which is like, comparable to Boost and um, BSD. Mm -hmm. So basically it's, it's a very good and free tool set for C++ and um, we just have actually started I mean, with, I mean, now in, in December. As far as I remember, 16 or 17 December, they want to release Clang 3.2. Some people say that they will be very close to a full implementation of C11. Um, as far as I know, the, the, at least what we can say about it is Clang will probably still have the lead in implementing C11. So, 